So as we find ourselves plunged into darkness yet again, it's time we press on forward into the unknown and see what lies in store for us behind the unicorn statue. Now, there is a very good reason why the previously lit area was no longer powered. That's because we need to make sure whenever we head into this area that we have both distribution keys because, well, we are met with our first large distribution board. And the primary difference with the larger distribution board is that it will require two keys. This is especially tantamount because... You can already hear the bell tolling of the maid as she is on the hunt for us. And while normally this hasn't really been a problem in other parts of the house, this area of the house is somewhat unique in that the way we got in here, that unicorn statue was actually just a one-way doorway. So you can run into a bit of trouble if you manage to get in here without both distribution keys. That's not going to be a problem though, because we have all the power flowing and we can... take in all the interesting sights that this portion of the house has to offer. Now this eye here at the end is not merely for decoration, it's... It's actually part of a larger puzzle that we need to figure out. Along with these statues here, which, if we take a look at the pedestal, will give us another hint as to what we need to do here to unlock the door. So we need to have all these statues facing away. And if we mess with the statue... We find that they do turn, but they all turn in unison, and since none of them were facing the same direction, that means we're going to need another piece of the puzzle here to have them all facing away properly. So with that in mind, I guess without any real further direction, we should just start taking the doors in order. Let's see what's behind door number one. And as one could assume from a mask room, it is quite adorned with a number of different masks. Seems they're pulled from all types of societies and cultures, each with their own story to tell. And I do like all the little details that come with each one of the masks, especially if you get right up close to them. And while there is a lot of interesting things in here, our main point of interest, really, is well, what appears to be a missing mask from one of these displays. Because that is the key to another puzzle that we are as yet not going to be able to solve. So we'll just keep that in mind for the future and keep exploring. See what's behind door number two. A very spacious dance hall. But what is a dance hall without some awaiting dancers? But they don't seem to be having a, a good time in the dance hall. I wonder what might be the issue.
ポーカーなんて何が楽しいのあの人弱いくせに自分が勝つまでやめないんだから。And indeed, from what we learned in the first game, poker can be a pretty dangerous activity to be a part of, but I'm assuming that's also going to be the problem with these two young ladies. ところでジェシカ様姿を見せないなんてやっぱりお体の方があなたの旦那様が見てらっしゃるんでしょうどんな具合なの何でもここ最近は随分落ち着いたとか。だから今年は予定通り誕生パーティーを開催されると聞いていたのですがここだけの話私はそう長くは持たないんじゃないかとまあなんてことでしょうアルバート様さぞ。So we have a trio of missing poker playing dance partners. And even more than that, we get a definite reaffirmation that the state of Jessica was not one that was unknown to other visitors to the house. I suppose it might be a positive that she had become stable, though. From what we have learned, that more than likely meant that she was destined for that glass coffin. Still, though, that puts us up, puts us up to three puzzles now that we need to solve. Though this door is going to lead us to some nice progression. In so much that it will give us a shortcut back to the main entrance hall, along with a very familiar specter. We already knew this day would come, but I wonder what's up with our old friend Brian. So it still seems that he is haunted by that violent demise that he met. Though, at this point,、um, we have taken care of the person or entity that did kill him. Though, I guess he might still be a little bit spooked by that maid ghost that's still roaming about. Maybe that will be enough to appease him. Still, though, that just leaves us one more door to explore in this east wing corridor. It still does not seem to be offering us much in the way of solving any of our current dilemmas. Though I always do enjoy looking around at just the different pieces of furniture and layout that the mansion has to offer. The good news is that we are not out of available rooms just yet. And I get a good feeling that soon. We might finally be able to start solving some problems laid out before us. And as per usual, a sound that we can't really identify the source of, 
pretty much means that there is going to be a ghost waiting for us to assist them. And I think I can already tell what the problem is here. あ、アルバート様のお客さんですかあの、そこのろうそく取ってくれませんかえっと、早く持っていかなくちゃいけないんです。今日のパーティーで、あの、ローソクを使うからって言われてて早くしないともうすぐ始まっちゃうんですお願いします。And that's certainly a simple enough request. Though, if we really wanted to, we could give him a candle straight out of our own inventory. ありがとう。俺にこれあげます。2階の廊下で拾ったんです。何かは知りませんけど。なんだか綺麗でしょ僕 田舎から出てきてて失敗ばっかりだからみんなにバカにされててメイドのパティさんは励ましてくれるけど自分もそうだったって田舎の家の前には大きな松の木があって いつもそこで遊んでてロバートにマイケルみんな元気かな帰りたいそ so even though we were able to help with the initial task it does not seem that we are done with that young boy just yet Still, he did give us a fairly blatant and obvious key to that statue puzzle back on the upper floor. And while we are going to want to solve that fairly shortly, I figure we might as well go ahead and finish exploring the other two doors available to us down here. Also, that young ghost is pretty much a grim reminder of just the horrible acts that Albert must have performed with that red soul stone. With the older party guests, you can kind of just throw them away as just normal casualties of life, but it's just something about all the young children that we're finding littered about the, the mansion, stuck forever in this purgatory that makes everything... So much more grim. But as we find ourselves on the other side of that open pit area, we seem to have stumbled into, I guess, what would have been a very lavish gym. Maybe turn of the 1900s. Especially seeing all this archaic exercise equipment, such as the rowing machine, or what could possibly be the most painful stationary bike I've ever seen. The real reason, though, for coming into this optional area is that there is a ghost located in one of these lockers. And while it was easy enough to find this young hiding ghost, 
There was a little bit of an additional puzzle here that, believe it or not, was based around time. You might be wondering where we might have figured that out, and I'll show you shortly, but first... But we find our second hide-and-seeker. Though I feel remiss in the fact that I did end up missing the clue for this ghost because there was another hide-and-seek playing kid back in the boathouse. ここが分かったね。カートはまだ見つかってないの？負けちゃったな。あいつ隠れるのうまいんだ。前も夜になって寝てたところをやっと見つけたんだ。お兄ちゃん、早くあいつを見つけちゃってよ。Now, while it may not seem that this would be a particularly difficult ghost to find, indeed it is because, well, for one thing, you need the lamp, and the second problem in that regard is the fact that, well, George ended up taking our lamp once we were trapped down under the Tower of Grief. So, if you didn't manage to go from, let's say, the ruins back to the mansion, which you never really necessarily have a need to. You could easily lose access to your lamp, and in turn lose access to uh, a ghost spirit. Which would mean that you wouldn't be able to get the best ending of the game. For now though, have our own problems to deal with. Here's that. Not only is the maid ghost finally found us in a place without electricity, also appears that we have managed to corner ourselves. This brings up one of the many, many dangers of the maid ghost. She can just really catch you by surprise, and as opposed to some of the other ghosts we've run into, after taking a swing at you, she doesn't merely just go away if you're still in the vicinity. She will still violently keep swinging at you. For now, though, as we have reached something of a dead end on the lower floor, now time we start solving some of the puzzles we've been given access to. The first one being uh, turning all these statues so that they are giving a cold shoulder to the all-seeing eye. Now, as we already know, we can turn the statues. But how do we stop the statues from turning? Well, if we put in that unmovable statue plate, it does end up blocking the movement of at least one of the statues. And 
And by doing that, that means that we can slowly but surely start lining up all the statues to at least match up with the one that isn't currently moving. As that does take a little bit of time, I just decide to go ahead and skip ahead to the end of the puzzle after all of them are synchronized. And just like that, we have solved our first puzzle, really, and been given access to a brand new area. And it is a exceedingly dangerous area if you're not expecting it. Because there is something we are wanting to do in here. Though we are going to have to have some light. Hopefully you have been making sure to pick up other candles because that is going to be your only light source in this room. And while the candle is at least some means of giving us a little bit of light, it's still not as great as turning on the power in the room because you, know, you can you can still tell that the maid is still pretty much aggressively going after us. Now we do want to talk to that ghost, but well, if at all possible, I I do want to talk to him without this bell ringing. That should be good. And with that, we have found, along with that ghost we missed out in the boathouse, all of the kids playing hide-and-seek. Which means we can go put that little girl to rest now that all of her friends are found. And in this adjacent managerial office, we can get a little bit of a breather. Though I will say, for how large this room might seem, it's in all reality pretty barren of anything of interest. No items hidden away, no nothing to read. of real interest, though, is in this other adjacent room. Because on the central table here, we find a set of playing cards. All that's missing are some poker players. I think I know how to call them, though. しかし、レオンさんにも困ったものですな。自分が勝つまでやめようとしない。お待たせしました。さ、そろそろ本気を出すとしようか。
チェンジだ。チェンジですな。フルハウスですなスーペアゴまったくここは席が悪いそこに座っていたら飼っていたのは私ださあもう一勝負いきましょうか。So let's see if we can't turn poor Leon's luck around. Now the solution to this is a pretty simple one. Believe it or not, Leon, Leon was indeed very correct that maybe if he had been If he had switched positions with the winning person's chair, that he himself would have been the winner for that hand of poker. So, if we switched his chair around with the gentleman that got the full house, I think he finally might have a change of luck. フルハウスだ。スーペア。役なしですな。And with the game successfully brought to an end, let's go and see just if the ball is going off with a bang. The couples have met a lovely end, finally meeting each other in the afterlife. And even more than that, we are certainly rack racking up all of these astral pieces. Because believe it or not, in this puzzle alone is, I would say, about a fifth of the overall astral pieces in the entire game. And along with those astral pieces, one of the party goers also dropped and the key to the housewife's bedroom. So let's go ahead and head back down there and see what lies in store for us.
So, while the nomenclature on this room might seem initially a little bit confusing, might make you assume that, I don't know, perhaps this is Albert's wife's room, in reality, the ghost that we're about to meet is actually Albert's mother. アルバートはいつも and what feels like our first trip back in time and quite a bit greets us with nothing more than a mask waiting for us on the bed.私、仮面って好きよ。その君の悪い奴がかこれだけじゃなくて仮面全部よ。被ると違う自分になれる気がするの。その間は病気のことだって忘れられる。さあ、行こう。そろそろ食事の時間だ。え。アルバート。ジェシカ、しっかりするんだ。私 まだ死にたくないわ。やりたいことだってたくさんあるもの。何を言っている。絶対に大丈夫だ。私が必ず直してやる。そうだ。どんな犠牲を払ってても必ず。全てを犠牲にしてもアルバートはジェシカを救おうとする。彼女だけが彼にとってただ一人の家族だから。彼にとって私は父親の妻でしかなかった。私ではダメだった。それを彼はジェシカの中にジェシカアルバートを止められるのは彼女だけ誰かジェシカを起こしてあげて And from Albert's own mother, we get an even stronger picture about the real love that Albert felt towards Jessica, and ultimately the fact that she might be the only real means we have of stopping him. Now in the bathroom, we are able to find another two con containers of herb seed, in case we wanted to make the long trek out to the greenhouse to do more horticulturing. Along with that, we find just that level of from software detail in this very, very ornate bathroom and bathtub. For now, though, with our brand new mask, it's time to head back to the mask room. And it 
it's time to find out just what happens when we replace the mask on the hook here. By completing the mask presentation there, it appears to have opened up a secret compartment in the wall. But we aren't going to want this open for now. Instead, this is just going to be future knowledge that will be of use to us. As we check out this door we didn't look into earlier, find ourselves back into the past. Now, we don't want to check that door again just yet. Instead, we want to go ahead and open back up that hidden passage. Because we are going to want to make sure we have a quick escape for what we're about to do. Kinoseka. <sighs> また。なぜだ。なぜうまくいかない。この石に命を捧げれば良いのではなかったのか。そうすれば。ジェシカは助かると。なぜだ。何が足りない。So I get the feeling now I know what had happened to all those dancers at the ball. It seems like the Soul Stone required more blood than Albert was originally able to offer. At least he was smart enough to lock the door behind him. Though it did sound like he was messing with something right next to the door here before he left. And if we investigate the giant mask here, we see that it seems to have a hidden compartment in the mouth. And that's exactly where we find the key to that room. Still, there was something in what Albert just said that makes me wary to look into this room. Something about a sacrifice not being enough. And maybe my worries were a bit unfounded. Everything seems on the up and up. Minus the undercover corpse here. Yeah, 
And I get a feeling I know who this hand might belong to. The missing maid, Patty. But what about this pine cone? Well, it just so happens we might have talked to a ghost previously who had, I guess, a little bit of memory, maybe a little bit of knowledge regarding pine trees, so let's head back there. And as we free his soul and give him back his prize pine cone, in turn we get back a very, very important item to the maid Patty. And considering that we now know where her body might have ended up, I think it's time we finally laid her soul to rest. As with all of the other aggressive souls, though, it's not going to be quite that simple. Because not only is Patty as apt as ever with her knife wielding, but the arena we have to fight her in is extremely small, though it's easy enough to rush her. I will say that this can be a pretty difficult boss encounter to deal with, considering the very, very tight spaces you're given. Though, it just really seems to bring up the question of what ended up happening in here? It seems like just the entire ground tore out from underneath the bed, maybe from poor Patty's spirit violently lifting up out of her body. But underneath the floorboards we do find a healing item, in case we did take a little bit of damage from her telekinetic knives. And in addition to that, our other point of interest is this lit up switch on the wall here. Seems we have a brand new secret corridor to explore back near the save point.
早くしないと手遅れになるわよ急ぎなさい恋人を救いたいんでしょう Again, we are given a warning about this invisible sand running out of an unseen hourglass. Just what timer are we running against here? Well, we are going to end up finding out about that next time. For now, I think we have done quite a bit. So, next time, we are going to head up into this new secret area and see what lies in store. But for now, I'll just say see you next time.